Offshore wind, solar, Dominion Energy is a leader in the clean energy transition. We're dedicated to providing reliable, affordable, safe, and clean energy as we support and invest in our communities. Dominion Energy is building a clean energy future. Actions speak louder. Welcome to Action Speak Louder, highlighting Dominion Energy's clean energy projects and community support. I'm Peggy Fox, Dominion Energy Media and Community Relations Manager. We are proud to support Northern Virginia Veterans Association. It's a nonprofit coalition that provides direct personal care and coordination of services for the most vulnerable, underserved, and marginalized veterans in the Northern Virginia region. And they do this at no cost to the veteran. As you can guess, the Northern Virginia Veterans Association needs a lot of help and support to do what they do. And here to tell us about it and, and the scope of the problems that veterans face and the needs that they have is Eddie Garcia. He's a board member with Northern Virginia Veterans Association, which is also called Nova Vets. Eddie, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, Peggy, and thank you guys for having us. Yeah, I like, I like the term Nova Vets. It's easy to say, it just rolls off the tongue and, and you guys do wonderful work. Tell us about your service. I know you're a veteran. Thank you for your service. Yes. Tell us about your your service in the military and then how you came to be a board member and find um, Nova Vets. Sure, and, and thanks for, for, for ha giving us this platform. So my name is Eddie Garcia. Um, I did a 22 years as an Army veteran, um, all up and down the East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, deployed a couple times to uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, served overseas, um, finished up my career after 22 years here in the D.C. area. Uh, we liked the area so much that we decided to stick, stick around. Mm -hmm. And so uh, spending time in D.C., we, uh, it gave us a chance to see the problems that veterans face at a national level. Uh, and then through friends of ours, we got connected with the Northern Virginia Veterans Association uh, just because our priorities overlap. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're super excited about trying to help veterans, especially those in most need, especially those local here uh, to Virginia and Northern Virginia. Tell us about some of the needs. What are some of the big needs that veterans have? Well, veterans' needs are uh, holistic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it can sp uh, span anything from employment needs uh, to uh, disability needs, uh, transformations in people's homes to accommodate injuries or disabilities. It's uh, food insecurity, it's housing insecurity, mm -hmm. it's uh, mental, physical, emotional, psychological, um, uh, medical uh, issues, financial issues. So the breadth of veterans issues is far and wide, um, which which mm -hmm. means there's a need there. And then uh, for the elderly, um, it, those needs just kind of exacerbate. And mm -hmm. so that's where uh, Nova Vets fits in here locally to the Northern Virginia area. And when you find uh, veterans uh, who are the most vulnerable and marginalized, as, as uh, you all point out, uh, how do they come to find you? Or how does that, how does that connection happen? Well, it's a variety of ways. You, you, hopefully, they see uh, a program such as this yeah. and, and some representation from Nova Vets. But uh, we as an organization, we, we try to be in the community in order to get our name out. A lot of people don't know who we are because we're not a national organization. Mm -hmm. We're locally focused. Uh, these are the, the veterans that we help are in our neighborhoods. They, and we don't try to pass mm -hmm. off veterans to other organizations. We, we take a holistic approach uh, to help. So we're, we're in farmers markets, we're in community events, local festivals. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we do if, uh, uh, opportunities like this to be on TV yeah. and camera to, to get our message out, to let people know that we're there. And then once they call in, uh, we, we take it from there. We have uh, a, a small group of local coordinators that intakes veterans, as they call. We have a questionnaire that we go down uh, to, to find out holistically what are the needs of this individual, mm -hmm. um, where do they live, how do they live, uh, what are there any issues that, that are most important right now, but then also what are the second or third order um, issues that would be follow on, right? Mm -hmm. So if some, for instance, if someone has, uh, is facing food insecurity mm -hmm. or uh, possibly eviction from their home, um, first we have to give them or find a way to give, give them assistance now so they can have the food they need or stay in the home that they that they live in but that doesn't solve the problem mm -hmm. so the next uh, questions would probably be along the lines of finance and mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm a financial professional so I volunteer my time and my expertise to try to make if if a financial plan is uh, is something that's needed it's something that I volunteer to do 
And, and so we reach out to use the, to, to find resources that we can uh, to fit the veteran's mm -hmm. particular needs. So as, uh, as we talked about, making the connections, trying to sure. find who can help this, because you, you obviously don't, the organization doesn't have all the resources, but you can find the resources, find the organizations that do, that may have the resources. Uh, financial planning and, and, and what have you, but um, I mean the needs are sometimes very, very desperate. Sure, and, and so we, we, as you pointed out a couple of times, we, we really focus on the most vulnerable mm -hmm. and, the, and the, the most at need, uh, which typically are elderly mm -hmm. and disabled. Mm -hmm. And so that takes a variety of forms. Mm -hmm. Uh, it takes the, the form of people that are visually impaired, uh, that are hearing impaired, uh, that have uh, physical ailments or uh, amputees w with uh, different diseases that, that cause m the, the easy things to do in life to be extremely difficult. Right. And so right. Those are, that's the population that we're most focused on. You know, uh, we have some numbers that might surprise you, actually. I, I found this graphic on the NovaVets.org website, your website. It shows the 10 counties that uh, NovaVets serves from Loudoun all the way south to Spotsylvania County. So this is a large territory. And in this region, there are 62,471 vulnerable veterans, uh, 400 uh, 4,688 live in poverty, 31,000 are disabled, that's 15%, 26,000 are over the age of 75. So that's a lot of veterans who need help, and, and these are men and women who serve their country, and they might be in dire need. So you've identified the number, sure. um, it, but this is a large area. You said you're a small organization. I know it was started by... Um, the, also the, a veteran, right. like Angela McCollum, doctor, she's a PhD, and she, she's just quite a go-getter and has put together a great uh, board and, and staff and has um, uh, great ideas on how to solve the problem, but you need a lot of help. You need uh, absolutely. people to help. A absolutely. Um, Angela has been uh, a, a, a real fixture in the community, in the veteran community here in Northern Virginia. Uh, Nova Vets is a small operation. There isn't a lot of, uh, well, there isn't any waste. Um, it's it's really focusing our efforts and our money and our resources mm -hmm. to get at the problems that are that are in front of us. And the need is great. Those those numbers are are, are high because the need the need is great, right. and they're they're only growing. Twenty years of conflict uh, globally has had an effect on the veteran population, and uh, that veteran population is just growing here in Northern mm -hmm. Virginia. Virginia as a whole has got a lot of veterans. Northern Virginia uh, in particular has a lot of veterans. Mm -hmm. And for a variety of reasons, um, Northern Virginia being somewhat difficult for mm -hmm. anyone to navigate uh, right. physically uh, is that much more difficult for, for elderly and disabled. So the, the need is, is really great. And I know we're getting to that. We're gonna spend some time talking about it, but transportation is one of the biggest needs that underserved veterans have and just getting someplace especially in northern virginia where traffic can be a nightmare uh it, it, you know elevates that problem but uh, i have a video that you all sent me that i want to show everybody you know you, you've had a service helping with transportation uh, that helping veterans get get to their doctor appointments these are veterans who can't drive anymore so you sent us this video of a veteran who received this service that you're providing and was so moved and thankful. I'd like to show it to our audience so they can see what a difference it made. You know, it is true when you join the Navy, you do see the world. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I'm, I had diabetes. Mm -hmm. I had it from the service. Um, I was and then now it, it really, it, you know, it started in 2018 where I lost my vision and uh, I also lost my kidneys last year. Things change and uh, when things change in your life, it could be financially and medically. And uh, the, the only best way to equate it is, is to, to put it as in a New York minute. Your department has been, has been a miracle. Okay. Miracle, miracle, miracle. I, I, I can't. I, I can't put words. I can't put words. Um, one of the services that Melissa provides was the service of uh, transportation to and from my dialysis center. Okay. And the other thing that uh, uh, that you guys do that is freaking awesome 
is that the cab service that you got, you know, they helped me out from the cab into the dial center and back into the car. Not too many people do that. When they're there to hold your arm, to wheel you to the car, wow. When you get to that crossroad and, and you're literally stuck. Yeah. You're literally stuck financially. You're literally stuck with transportation. You're literally, you're literally stuck. I have nobody here. And it's like, when you have family, isn't it great that you can reach out to a family, a cousin, a brother, and they've come to you and they help you? Mm -hmm. You feel that ease. That's how I feel with your services. You can just see how moved he was in having a person transport him to the doctor. You know, he didn't, he felt like he was taken care of. You know, you can, you can just really feel how important that was to him. Here's somebody who, uh, I, I believe he's, he was blind or at least. Yes, he's yeah. visually impaired. Visually impaired. Uh, not totally blind, but, but he doesn't see well. Yeah, he can't uh, drive, obviously. He, yeah. he can't drive. Yeah, Eddie Acosta is his name. Uh, he, he's a local veteran who needs to get to appointments just like every other veteran. He has the, um, health needs that, that he needs to take care of and daily tasks mm. that he needs to do, but there's no one there to, to, to help him. And so as a, as a fully abled male myself, uh, I don't like to be on the roads here mm. in Northern Virginia, 95, 395, yes. I-66, they're, they're, they're difficult. Um, the elder, elderly population that live on the outskirts of, of Northern Virginia, whether it be Gainesville, Stafford, Prince William counties, um, getting them to their appointments in DC or Alexandria or Arlington, wherever it is that, they're, mm -hmm. that they need to, to, to get to is extremely important. Uh, it's difficult for them. And that, that difficulty uh, sp spans in a lot of different directions, um, especially with elderly mm -hmm. and, and, and disabled uh, individuals who might not be able to navigate websites, uh, that might not be able to physically get out of their homes on their own. Uh, they need special accommodations for transportation, whether it be vans or uh, wheelchair and handicap access. Uh, the, the need is far and wide. Mm -hmm. uh, there, almost no situation is identical. Uh, so we attack those problems individually, granularly, one by one, mm -hmm. um, methodically and systematically. That's how we try to get after it. And you actually got some funding uh, to help help this project that you have in transporting veterans to their appointments. Uh, could you talk about that and where the funding stands and where you are now? Sure. So um, we have a program called Vets Drive Vets, mm -hmm. and it, just like the name <laughs> says, we, we, it's a program to get veterans uh, to drive, uh, veterans being the Nova Vets, mm -hmm. to, to get transportation to our veteran population to their appointments. Um, and we received the grant from the Department of Transportation earlier this year, um, and based on our calculations, that money was expected to last until the summer of 2023. Uh, we were averaging about, about the, at the time somewhere between 100 and 150 uh, rides per month. Uh, that number has almost doubled, wow. so it's at 200 to 250 rides a month, which means that the amount mm. of time that the money was going to last essentially got cut in half. So uh, that program's money is going to be unfunded at the end mm. of November. And so one of our crucial needs right now is identifying uh, the corporate partners or uh, corporate sponsors, individual uh, donors that care about this population, that see the need uh, of, of the Vets Drive Vets program to get our most vulnerable veterans the care they need into the right places. Mm -hmm. And so right now that's where the organization is, is focused on. Uh, and that's why we're, we're happy to be here with you. Do you know why the need uh, doubled? Like just more people in need? I, I think it's more people in need, but it's also m more information. Uh -huh. So, so as Nova Vets gets its um, name recognition mm -hmm. uh, in, into the public, uh, more people realize that there's somebody here that actually helps in this area uh, because there isn't a need. I mean, there isn't a, an, uh, a no particular, one else is doing it. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a, there's a lot of organizations that or, or programs that try to get after this problem, but either veterans are too young, mm. meaning they're not over the age of 85, 
And so a 79 year old isn't old enough for some of the programs that exist uh, for, for transportation. You mean elsewhere? What, is, what, what, do you, what do you have to have? What, who qualifies for your program? Uh, anyone who's disabled okay. uh, and and without a without a the ability to get to their appointments so and so it, age part, doesn't matter part, age no. does not if matter you're disabled and uh, can't get to your gender appointment. doesn't matter any of those other things don't matter Personally. and yeah. so uh, that's part of our intake process as we question as we go down the questionnaire and we find out a, exactly how this veteran is is living what their challenges are what their disabilities are and then how and then we devise a plan on how we help them uh, increase their quality of life, uh, especially if they're elderly, um, we, we give them back the dignity that they deserve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, if they've got the funds, they can call a cab. But, it, you know, for, for many of these folks, um, just that kind of, it, it, you know, anything is difficult. If you can find a way to get there that uh, gives you dig dignity, uh, you don't have to go, you know, catch a bus, that might be very difficult. Who knows if even buses go near there? Uh, it's just hard. Transportation is difficult. It's an ex extremely difficult uh, problem, no matter where it is. Mm -hmm. When you add Northern Virginia mm -hmm. into that equation, it becomes uh, nearly impossible for someone mm. who's uh, severely disabled, in, in, whether physically or, or mentally. What have you discovered for these folks if they just can't get a ride? They, do they not go? They just don't go. Wow. They, they don't receive the care they need. Uh, they, they typically get forgotten. And and they and that leads to a whole host of other, other issues. Other issues. And so the veteran crisis on a variety of fronts. Mm. It, it, I'm not going to break any news uh, to talk about veteran suicides, veteran uh, uh, um, drug abuse, uh, alcohol abuse, uh, overdoses, um, depression, anxiety. All those things are are, are really high, mm -hmm. and they inhibit. Um, they, they're almost self fulfilling. Uh, on mm -hmm. the veteran, so as they suffer some of these problems, these anxiety problems, when they hit these roadblocks, in this case we're talking about technology or transportation or, or finance or whatever it is, uh, it only exacerbates those those other problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you can't take care of yourself, if you can't get the care that you need, well, you, well then you, you typically drink more, you, you typically uh, turn to those mm -hmm. to those problems. Um, Self-medication self, in self some cases. And, and so we try again. We try to get after each individual, um, and f wherever they're at, um, with the, whatever type of, uh, of of need that they have specific to them, and we just methodically go through a process with them without trying to pass them off to another organization. Anything that we can do, uh, we try to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, how did the pandemic affect all this? It seems like, from what you're telling me, that um, maybe more people found out about your service through the pandemic. Um, did that happen? I, yes, I mean, I, I believe that's why the increase mm. in numbers. Um, also, there was a period of time where uh, the, the medical facilities weren't open during, mm -hmm. during the pandemic. And so unless you had a, a crisis surgery mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. on the horizon, uh, a lot of that medical care just got delayed. It didn't get, it didn't get eliminated. Right. It, and, and so veterans, especially elderly veterans, that have been suffering with some of these injuries or illnesses now for two years it plus mm. since the pandemic that got delayed 18 months, 20 months. Mm. And so now that things are sort of getting back to where they were, uh, everybody's trying to get back to the to, to their to see their doctor. How did telemedicine uh, play with all this? I mean, I can imagine that it would have been very difficult, especially for an older veteran first to do it, to even yeah. do the telemedicine, whether they have a computer, know how to do it. But, you know, they're, if they're out far, maybe the Internet doesn't work as well. All of those things that you mentioned are a factor. Um, it, again, you're dealing with uh, mm -hmm. with elderly. Most of them don't have computers. They don't have access or, or uh, phone access to mm -hmm. to do to, to have some, some of these programs that are on the phone. These applications to, to yeah. receive care, and then they live in in the country. Um, yeah, Uber they, probably is not going to come to some of their homes. Well, it's not even, even if, just even that, if they ha had Uber on their phone, even though they had a, yeah. It's not even just the Uber. It's the, it's it, it's having a ride from someone who can be counted on, and it's having uh, a ride that has the uh, the the what the accommodation for oh. the disability that we're facing. If if we have a, a veteran who has a physical disability mm. who can't get out of his own house without help, um, an Uber driver's not going to take that on um, right. because that's not what they do. I don't know their policies, but they're they're not going to take that on. Mm -hmm. So, a part of our transportation coordinator 
uh, part of her job is ensuring that any uh, transportation that we send to someone's house has the appropriate expectation of what's coming at them mm -hmm. and so that they can handle it. So if they need to physically help the veteran, if they need to have uh, a, 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 a handicap access to a vehicle, if they need to wait until the appointment's over uh, to bring the individual back home, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. every circumstance is, is, is different. And so it's super important that there's someone there who's actually coordinating mm -hmm. that, and that's what Nova Vets does. And what about the whole, I, I, because you have, uh, you have paid people to, to do the transportation, uh, though volunteers can be trustworthy as well. How do you decide if you've got a, a trustworthy volunteer who's actually going to show up versus, um, you know, well, we're going we're gonna to have to pay for this transportation? Well, the, the decision is usually between the transportation coordinator. Mm -hmm. And we do have a couple of loyal volunteers. Uh, well, actually, we have a lot of loyal volunteers sure. with the organization as a whole, but we do have some volunteers that specifically take on the task of, of driving uh, veterans to and from places they need to, to go. Uh, but that's just not always the case. And, mm -hmm. and some of these veterans don't live near where the volunteer is. Um, we may have volunteers in Prince William, but there's a veteran who's trying to get somewhere in you know, Mount Vernon, uh, mm -hmm. from Mount Vernon. So it can be difficult. Um, also, volunteers can easily back out because of other things that are, that, that are going on in their lives, the emergencies. So uh, volunteering can be difficult in that aspect, especially when it comes to keeping appointments because uh, any medical facility and the veterans uh, process uh, is also pretty rigid about missing mm -hmm. appointments. So if you don't, if you don't get it to the appointment you're, you're scheduled mm -hmm. uh, to get to, you might not get another one for four, six, eight weeks mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And so that care just keeps being delayed and it's, it's frustrating mm -hmm. and it just feeds into uh, a lot of the mental uh, disabilities that veterans already face. And as you're highlighting, when you delay care, it, things get worse. Absolutely. The, not only do your, does your problem get worse because it's not being addressed, you're missing cancer screenings, things like that. And, um, and then costs go up as well. Sure. It, it's a, it's a, it, it's a, a pretty big problem mm. set across the board. And so having reliable, timely transportation for these most vulnerable veterans mm -hmm. that can't get to their appointments to traffic, to traffic them there, mm -hmm. um, wait for them and provide the assistance necessary once they get there and mm -hmm. to return home safely. It, it's a, it, it's something that no one or very few people actually think about, but it's a, it's a huge uh, problem when it comes to veterans getting the care that they need. Can you give us some numbers before we talked about just the number of veterans who do live in poverty in, in a, a lo the larger, uh, the greater Northern Virginia area from Loudoun, Loudoun, Fairfax, Arlington, down, uh, down Prince William County, St Stafford, Spotsylvania, and your number is uh, getting close to 5,000 who live in poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, what, what about um, the numbers of vets that you have who are depending upon these rides and will soon be without rides because the money is going away. I don't have the hard number mm -hmm. uh, right now, but I can tell you that we're we're averaging between 200 and 250 uh, rides a month. So you divide that by 30 days, you know, mm -hmm. or 20, 20 uh, week days, and you're looking at uh, a pretty high number of individuals and, and an individual appointments every single day, and so which is why this, is a, th this program is important, which is mm -hmm. why the funding for the program is important, which is why the community's mm -hmm. awareness of this problem is, is super important. And that way we can continue to get the care, yeah. uh, provide the care that these veterans need. So, I mean, realistically, uh, hundreds of veterans are gonna be without transportation to their doctor's appointments uh, soon. Next month. Next month, just, Next just month. for into the holidays. Yes, ma'am. It's, uh, it's heartbreaking to hear that. I'm hopeful somebody can come forward that, that um, you know, to, to help to get these folks uh, to, to figure it out, to provide volunteers, to provide the funding. Um, but uh, thank you for coming on and, and explaining to us what the, the, the problem is and the need, the desperate need out there. And so if anybody wants to get involved, they can always go to novavets.org, that's our website, and check out the website and how to get involved, um, anything, Anything that they can do mm -hmm. um, is, is most appreciative. And again, this is for the local community. Right. So uh, it's super important. These veterans need a lot of help.
thank you so much for coming on the show, Eddie, and telling us about the problem and the needs out there. And we want to thank the Northern Virginia Veterans Association for the important work it's doing, helping our community's most vulnerable, most underserved, and marginalized veterans. We're proud to support them and the positive impact they're having on people's lives. Thanks again for watching Action Speak Louder. We hope you join us next time to learn more about how Dominion Energy is working toward a sustainable future while supporting our customers and communities. You can find links to all of our programs on YouTube by searching Peggy Fox Action Speak Louder playlist or follow me on LinkedIn or Facebook. And many thanks to the staff here at Fairfax Public Access where this is being recorded. Take care and be safe.